how do human beings determine what is real? Now, one of the big ways we do is with our senses, particularly the visual sense in our culture. A lot of people is that whole seeing is believing thing, right? But there's another sense that we rely on even more to give the ultimate choice when it comes to deciding is something real or not. And that is the sense of touch. And that is what this trick is all about. Chris, mm -hmm. got a paper napkin here. Do me a favor, I'm gonna give you this napkin and I want you to tear a big corner off. Uh, not too big, not too small, maybe something about that size. Tear off that corner, sure. Just tear off and that'd be great, man. Thank you so much, okay. Now, are you right-handed or left-handed? Uh, left-handed. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to hold on to this piece really, really tight. Tightly, okay. tightly, tightly in your left hand. Go away. Okay, you got a good grip? Yeah. Okay, now, don't let me get too close to that. You can feel it inside. I haven't yeah. stolen it from you, right? Okay, now watch. I'm gonna take the napkin and I'm gonna divide it up into a bunch of pieces here. And you are gonna be the one to choose what is gonna happen with one of the pieces in particular. Okay, we'll do that. Gonna ball them up here, ball that one up there, ball that one there, ball it up, ball it up, ball it up. Okay, I want you to right now, with the same hand as you're holding the piece from the very beginning, point to one. Which one? It doesn't matter. Which one? This one. This is the one you should. Yeah. You don't want any others. No. Now keep in mind you had a choice. You could have taken any of these, mm -hmm. full choice the entire time, but you narrowed it down to one piece. Watch. Just like that. Look, look. I have. Turn the hand over slowly. Do not let me down. Let's see. I'm hoping you now have, boom, just like that, both pieces. If you've ever been to a real life magic shop, probably one of the tricks you saw was some version of what's called the sponge balls. And either use it with little sponge rabbits or these basically what look like clown noses. Now I performed with that stuff for years and it works just fine. However, as my style shifted, I wanted to become more organic, less like a typical magician and use stuff in the space and really make, I think ultimately make my magic more powerful. I started looking at ways to take certain techniques and use them uh, with everyday objects. And sponge ball, what's amazing about the sponge ball trick is that the essential effect is that a person holds on to one sponge ball, but when they open their hand, they have two. It happens in their hands. That's the magic of this, the tactile element. So it took me a long time to figure out, okay, now with advanced sleight of hand, there's many ways to do this effect, but what would be a handling that would work even for a new magician who maybe only all they know how to do is a simple vanish. That's all you need to know. So I came up with this handling and it's got a lot of virtues. I like it a lot for that, okay? Real organic. What you need to do is have beforehand a piece, nothing too small, nothing too big. Let's say this big, okay? From another napkin, you have that balled up. That's the only prep. And frankly, I have these, I can't tell you how many times I take my jeans out of the laundry and yes, I left one of these in there. So this is it. You have this in your pants pocket somewhere, your back pocket, whatever, and you can do this sweet effect. And what's cool is, yeah, it's just there's so many virtues about this. Now, it all happens in their hand. So I start with this finger pumped, okay? And I have this and I say, let's try something here. It's gonna happen not in my hands because it's cool the magic that happens in my hands, believe you me, uh, but let's try the magic in your hands key distinction there. And I asked the person to tear a corner off, okay? So Chris, tore a corner off, okay? And it don't get too concerned of how big is the corner, how small is the corner. They tear a corner off, which he's done, right? Um, and then I take the piece from him, if you'd help me here, Chris. He's got the piece here. He's torn it off. I take it from him and I say, are you right-handed or left-handed? And he says, right-handed. Say, because I'm gonna ask you to take this and hold it very, the reason I take it is to demonstrate that he's gonna hold it tight in his hand. So I start to ball this up in my hand, adding the other ball right beside it. So basically I have these two in my hand from the very beginning and I give them to him. All right? He holds on to them like that. So you have this beautiful time lapse now. He is there, he's gonna hold on to them for the whole thing. Now I have somebody else then tear this into pieces. And I don't say four pieces, six pieces, eight pieces. I just say, go ahead, about the same size piece, okay? And maybe they help me with it or maybe I do it all. If you do it all, the good thing about that is you can make sure none of the pieces are too big or too small, right? Now, I don't wanna emphasize how many pieces, not that it matters, but you'll see why. So I tear it up into pieces. It's five pieces, it's six pieces, it's seven pieces, whatever, okay? I'll tear this down. Now, this is all to create visual misdirection because in a moment, I'm gonna hide a piece among them. So the justification here though, is I got all these pieces, and this entire time, I'm planting a big, juicy time lapse. This person held this from the beginning, even before the magician started handling the pieces, okay? So magical in that regard. People won't even remember. Two minutes later, no one remembers you handing it to them. All they remember is that they tore the corner off and they held it in their hand. 
It's an important fact. The mind is a beautiful thing that way for magicians. Then I say go ahead and point one. Change mind, whatever. Go ahead, Chris, point to one. Doesn't matter which one. That one, you're sure you don't want this one. And this is where you can have bits of business and comedy and blah, blah, blah. So you pick this up and you do a false transfer, okay? Now, any false transfer that works for you is, is really all that matters. Here, I'm just doing a standard. It's in finger palm. I pretend to put it in the hand and close my hand over it. Okay, now the reason why I love this ending is because I do this and then with the piece palmed, I gather up all these and say, and you could have chosen any of these. Now, nobody's gonna go with an eagle K99. There were six, I think there's seven now. Not that moment. So you go, could have chosen any of these. You can put these in your pocket or you can just push them off to the side. No one, you come over here and really play this up. Sometimes I'll even do this. I'll say, hold on tight. It's happening. And I'll fake transfer it back. It adds so much. People will swear they saw it there a moment ago. Let that really sink in. Maybe you put a handkerchief over there or a dead mermaid, whatever. They're there. You ask them to turn over their hand and boom, they open up and they've got the two. And this is the kind of thing that in, in, in the hands, particularly of a woman, uh, women are more expressive than men. When a woman opens up her hands and finds those two in her hands, she often screams.